What is up YouTube fam, Ravi C here. Today we have a battle of the OG lids coming at you with the Innova Polecat versus the Discraft Rattler. Y'all, these discs have been around almost as long as I've been alive, but uh, you guys may not have, so uh, we gotta ask the most important question. Dale, how are you doing today? Are you having a good one? So catch me if I fall. So we're coming at you with a disc that Ledgestone dropped. For those of you unfamiliar with Ledgestone, Ledgestone is a retailer that also runs one of the biggest tournaments of the year in the Ledgestone Open. But when I heard that the Rattler was getting made in a premium plastic in the crystal plastic, I was super stoked about this opportunity because as a Polecat lover myself, I love the premiumness of this, but as a longtime ultimate thrower, the Rattler has always been a personal favorite because it feels like an ultimate lid, a Discraft Ultra Star just shrunk. This thing has always fascinated me, but I wanted to give you guys a little uh, history on these before we dive into the course. Approved January 5th, 1994, the Innova Polecat came out. Predominantly, it's been released in a base plastic, but in 2022, I believe it was. They actually released them in, in Halo plastic, which is super cool. I love that we have a premium plastic, uh, a real premium plastic, real Halo polecat. Now the Rattler was released the same year, actually also approved in 1994, but it was August 25th, 1994, and mostly comes out in this Pro D plastic. Now the Pro D you can see is really flexible, really gummy. And while this still has some flexibility to it, not near as much, the Rattler overall is just a, a thinner mold. And as someone who really likes playing ultimate, you know, like throwing those Frisbees, what I did not like about the base plastic Rattler, the Pro D Rattler, was when I felt like I gave it enough, the wall of the Rattler is really thin. And because it's thin, that flexibility comes in. So if you give this thing any power, any juice whatsoever, it feels like it folds in your hand which can be less than ideal. The Polecat doesn't have near as much flexibility to it. The rim is a lot thicker. So when I'm comparing the two base plastic versions, the Polecat wins every day of the week because the Polecat is a little more torque resistant. I can put a little more on it just because of the thickness of the rim versus the Rattler. Now also in terms of natural stability, I feel like the Rattler is less stable than the Polecat especially in the base plastic. But what's nice about a base plastic version of the disc and these lid discs in general is they're really good at those understable sort of neutral flip up shots. People use their glitches for this, things like that. But the hard part is, is that once they get seasoned in, as a base plastic, they sort of get in that sort of too touchy, unusable state. And that's exactly why today we're heading with the premium plastic Rattler and the premium plastic Polecat to go test it out. So no warm up throws, no getting loose, anything like that. I'm gonna stretch because I'm not a madman out here. But we're, uh, we're here at Greg Cardin Memorial Course and we're gonna play a couple of these shorter pitch and putt holes and then we're gonna play one big bomber hole at the very end of the whole round to see how these hold up. We're gonna go with the Polecat first. To throw a premium Polecats before, uh, they always have a little more stability than people give them credit for uh, when they're fresh out the gate as the premium ones. You're gonna hear me say this over and over again. Once again, the beauty of the premium one is once it beats into that super flippy straight option for you, it stays there for basically forever. Guys, I really thought that we might have literally just aced right off the rip. Uh, but great shot. As you see, super laser straight. Let's see if the Rattler has as much stability uh, in it as well. Okay. We didn't give the Rattler the height that we were looking for. They're the same height that we gave the Polecat, but it still held really straight. I like that. Now, some people may think that I'm insane for this, but I actually use the Polecat on some of my more... I'm downhill from the basket. I need glide, extra glide on the putt. Now the Wizards have solved a lot of that and given me some extra glide, but it's a good test because I do actually regularly throw some putts with a Polecat. So hopefully this doesn't feel too foreign. I didn't trust it. Time to see if we can give this a chance to glide. Nope. Didn't trust either of these. I talked about them being more floaty and more glidey and then didn't give either a chance to glide. Downhill, if you didn't catch Tuesday's video, I feel like I need to mention this. Maybe if you watched last week's video, you'll notice that there is not something here. 
oh, well, there is something here, but it's now been covered up since. I'm getting my tattoo tomorrow at the point of me filming this video, so I don't have it yet, but these videos are coming out after ones where I have actually gotten the tattoo and filmed. So Polecat still has the box. 195 feet, it's literally straight downhill. Basket's just right there. This is the beauty of the straight shot. It's so hard to replace that shot with that disc because I mean, it's just so good, dude. Let's see if the rattler, old Jake the Snake can follow up. Nope. Okay. I actually like that. I like that I didn't give it as much oomph because the Rattler just literally does feel less stable in my hands. Whether it's true or not, it feels less stable. So I didn't give it enough and you saw it faded out there, which is, or like had some fade, it was trying to fade. That's good to know. All right, so this is a shot that honestly comes from the ultimate days of like step out and throw like a little a little any forehand but with the pro d plastic versus the premium plastic of the rattler gets a little tougher uh like the pro d plastic when i did this shot that's when i really felt the rim give way hopefully a little more stability okay yeah that was really nice i like that i just got to trust it more there's really it slopes down away from the basket so it's hard to give it a chance to kind of hone in at the basket because if you're too high or too left, leaving yourself a long putt. There's the wind that I did not feel. And I throw a nose down putt. So for most people, if you putt into a headwind, it lifts your disc. But if you're a nose down putter, then what happens right there, it just dive bombs so much harder. That's a little embarrassing. This is gonna look great now that I'm trying to make the Rattler win. I'm not. All right, 242 feet. This one is a turnover the whole way to the basket. Traditionally here, I'm taking a pig and I'm throwing on a forehand and I'm putting it on hyzer, but you can see that there's one tree that's a different color like than the whole rest of the fairway straight ahead. And I'm throwing it kind of on hyzer towards that and then letting it slow push off to the right. The Anheuser makes this a much tougher shot. I will go ahead and say. unless you get super lucky through that inside line. Oh, the Rattler is just getting a hair unlucky. Like it's just, it's just a hair off on every single one, making it be further away. It's like, I'm just not learning with it being the second shot. And we didn't give it the height. I mean, that's, I think if I have my whole bag, I don't know that I'm making this shot very well from here. You can see the Rattler, we had to throw it on Anheuser, like an Anheuser forehand, but it also had to be super high, but it couldn't be super high because there was a branch in the way. We're actually gonna mark where the disc was with our left foot and hit it with this like. Okay, left the door wide open. Uh, maybe I should have, yeah. Should have marked with the right foot. That's on me. We're making a lot of mental errors today. The bummer is I feel like I'm not really showcasing what these discs can do. Yeah, see that's got sneaky, a little sneaky stability when throwing at low speeds. Unfortunately here, that's in the way. So we have to hit this with like a, try to drain it in with one of those hooks. Hole three is one that nine times out of 10, someone on your car is taking a four. Like if everybody pars this hole, I don't care if it's here or there's another pin location there, someone's taking a bogey on it every time because that fairway is just so tight. You touch one tree like this one did and you're off. You may be asking yourself at this point, why is the camera pointed straight up? Well, that's because that's what the hole does, ladies and gentlemen. This is another one. I throw a nice little easy forehand up the hill. It's only 170 feet, but we're gonna test a little more room to breathe on these. Try to give them the height. But it is, if you don't throw backhand turnovers regularly, throwing a backhand turnover, I mean straight uphill, tough shot. That was better. That was much better. 
that one is actually putting the rattler is i would still have to say hand feel on a back on drillage all of it goes to the hole cat just because it's a little thicker the rattler feels kind of flimsy in the hand but i'm liking the shot of the rattler if i would actually like that was the first time that i feel like i really trusted it and it showed i think going for the anheuser like the tommy tough so i'm going to try to hit a little ante through this gap on the right one thing about birmingham and we just had a bunch of people come in town for birdie ham takes over birmingham that you just don't un, you don't know if you don't play here is we do elevation better than most places this city is all elevation that's what makes up for our lack of major holes like major distance holes is i mean you're doing this at pretty much every course Let's see if we can't bang a putt that's a birdie that's a bogey for the polecat that's tough all right hole five 280 feet gap 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 really initial gap then you got to get right of this stuff on the left that's the common miss very technical hole very technical downhill though so the nice thing is hopefully we don't have to absolutely murder these things to get them down there i just saw in the last two holes though and this is something that i warn a lot of people about in person but i don't feel like i talk about near enough on here i hear you say like oh i don't have a forehand oh, i don't work on a forehand and when you develop the forehand the nice thing is when shot shape asks for it you have it but that backhand turnover there are just holes that if you're a lefty shot moving left to right or if you're a righty shot moving or right to left for lefties left to right for righties that look like okay i'm gonna try to jam a forehand but if you don't learn that backhand turnover it is so hard to come back and learn that skill and i showed up with a forehand pretty early in disc golf so i would say of all the skills that i've learned the roller I haven't put any time into learning on a backhand roller uh but that backhand turnover not one that i'm very adept at and it shows okay there I felt it turn over, which makes me think that there is a headwind coming out of here that I'm not feeling. Okay, there's definitely a headwind in there. Yeah, they both turned over. Not near far enough. It's definitely gonna be a four from there. Another fun fact, and one of the reasons that the Rattler is bringing like a super fun feel to me, is there was a disc golf disc called the Super Puppy that used to exist that was very lid-like as well, uh, very ultra starry. And I actually, from about 2012 through 2018, all I did for approaches, I hadn't discovered super, I hadn't discovered overstable putting approaches by that point. And so all my approaches, I used to just throw like an upside down Tommy with that type of a disc. And it would do exactly that and it would just skid right up to the basket we got two strokes actually on the pole cat so the rattler we're just going to give it a soft bid hope it sits down yeah right by the basket take our four pole cat's taking a three one stroke lead a couple holes to play it is 263 feet to the basket downhill tight tunnel literally the whole way low ceiling off the tee let's see what pole kitty can do Ooh, it was perfect. I really liked it. Okay, Jay got down there. The Rattler is, when it's hitting stuff on the ground, it is having some really volatile reactions of like skipping which way and what not. I don't know why that is. Still a stroke down, but there is water right behind the basket. So we're just gonna... We were just trying to lay it up, but there's so many rocks on the ground and so much things to hit that like it, you can't even really nestle here if you're flat. It feels like the rim of the disc is like catching all this stuff and like ricocheting it. Take back the stroke that it just lost. Now that I'm trusting this rattler, getting dangerous for my polecats. The thing the polecat has is an advantage is I have a lot of polecats. Another hole, 173 feet, basket sits off to the right. This one is a textbook forehand 
or the pig. Rattler has the box. We're gonna test these on them forehands as sort of the last hit. Like I said, what's hard about the Rattler is, is almost like this one just came out too late for me. Something that I think a lot of people don't think about when it comes to disc golf is like, let's say you go all in on a mold and you have a lot of backups, you gain a lot of confidence from it, like polecats. I have 20 something polecats to my name. So if I feel uncomfortable, like if this round is telling me, oh yeah, you don't have that shot dialed, I can take all 20 of my polecats, head to a field and boom, 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 boom. I only have one crystal rattler. I can't get the practice in with the crystal rattler that I can just because of how much more time it's gonna to take to do that. We're gonna stand this up on a forehand, see how good my touch forehand is. Yeah. Second tree, very kind to us there. Okay, we didn't hit that second tree. But basically the same shot. So you're seeing like, it's coming down to some are hitting trees, some are not. Some are hitting rocks, some are not. Big, huge, like broken tree here. Basket sits on the other side of that. Just let that skip on up over there. Tight tunnel over there. Let's see what we got for final putts. It's gonna be a par. So the Rattler's gonna end up even and the Polecat is gonna end up two over par. Let's talk final thoughts and differences. The final thoughts and ideas on these two discs. The Rattler, guys, in the crystal plastic is everything I wanted it to be. I really like this disc. I like how it feels. I like how it flies, um, especially when I started trusting it and giving it a little more pop. Really, really great. I think what does push the, the premium Polecat over for me is a couple different things. First, plastic availability. Always gonna be a big thing that I talk about, but like right now, finding a Halo Polecat, actually a little easier because there was just a new batch of them dropped because of cat merch. Uh, Halo Polecat's coming out. So there's now more Halo Polecat's for sure than ever. I know there's a run of ESP Rattlers out there. Uh, my friend Jared, who's a local pro here, uh, he, has an ESP Rattler that stays in his bag that he got from TK, who is a longtime Discraft sponsored player. And while yes, I did throw the Rattler better today, it scored better, I can't always look at like a scoring round and be like, or just one round and think, okay, yeah, that's the answer we're looking for. One's locked in over the other. Truly the thing that kicks it over the edge for me is not availability of plastic, not even how the score shook out today. Uh, the major difference maker here is that when I look at a base plastic polecat, a base plastic polecat, if I lost the watermelon polecat and I needed a flippy polecat immediately, I can go get a base plastic polecat and still throw it very comfortably, very easily, and accomplish a lot of the same lines. And that will work as a short-term solution. If the Rattler was my option and I seasoned this in and it's doing its thing, I would have to have another premium plastic Rattler because the Pro D Rattler just isn't it for me personally, but this is still a phenomenal disc. I really would encourage you, if you have had a hard time landing on a lid type option and you really wanted to add one to your bag, the glitch isn't it, um, the spore isn't it, I'm trying to think of other lidless type options, the Berg isn't it for you, the Rattler, I'm so happy that this premium plastic version existed. Hunt one down, you can probably find them pretty cheap. Probably a lot of retailers still have them uh, that have Ledgestone waves. A really, really fantastic option. I'm already locked in and feel great about the pole cap, but if I wasn't, and I would have been just sticking and making Rattlers work this whole time, I this is very welcome to the lineup great option. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day and that you find that lid that works for you because I'm telling you, this is the type of disc that when you pull it out and you throw great shots with it, everyone in your cart is shaking their head being like, man, I wish it was that easy. So hope you have a great rest of your day. Please make it fantastic for someone else too. But for now, we're going to leave you with the birdie.